Namaste beautiful yogis Today I wanted to come on and give you an update on my um, let's say four month postpartum I'm, I'm actually approaching five month postpartum so it would be four and a half months I've been wanting to share my postpartum video but haven't had time to shoot it and I think I tried to shoot it a few times and I was being pretty boring with my update so I just kind of um, let it go because I, I don't want to just share the basic stuff I kind of want to get into the the beautiful part of postpartum all right so I am about four months and four weeks postpartum not five months postpartum but probably ten days one week short of uh, uh, five months and I'll do an update on baby sleep breastfeeding and um, me and I might split it in two videos if it gets to be too long um, so uh, let's begin with uh, the first part of postpartum uh, the first uh, two weeks the hard part that went um, that part of the postpartum experience was amazing uh, it was really difficult physically and was really probably the most beautiful feelings I've ever experienced in my life um, emotionally and spiritually it was this profound grand expansive connectivity to the universe and God or the divine or love it was just like the most amazing feeling accompanied with the gnarly 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 pain of the postpartum which I had no idea it would be that nasty but I have to say that because my labor was so painful my uh, contractions were so painful that nothing seemed very painful after so the pain was okay I was just worried is this gonna ever be the same again <laughs> that was mostly the challenging part because when you log on to forums people like start saying how much they are forever changed and not for the good so I didn't know how much the recovery will get to a better place than before rather than like you're forever a little bit changed all right now towards my fifth month i think i'm feeling pretty much the same as before uh some in some ways better emotionally definitely better i had a massive awakening or a massive jump in uh, growth i we always tend to grow through life but this was a massive one for me it was almost uh, last night we were having a conversation with my partner john and i feel like i had um you know how you always have realizations about life and spirituality and how you view life but in the last 10 years i don't think i have had a massive jump where a new layer of reality it's not that things I didn't know it's all things I knew but I didn't feel them with that level of intensity so I had a massive awakening on the spiritual deep soul level about love and giving love receiving love um, bravery letting go allowing myself to just be uh, being absolutely joyous in the present moment um, letting go of nostalgia grief blame it's not that my work is all done i will still continue working of course life is not gonna just you figure it out but there was a massive 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 veil lifted over my heart we have like think of emotions as an onion and you just keep peeling off layers so massive layer was peeled off a big one uh, which I haven't had in quite a while I have I have had small ones I have dealt with pain and letting go and other things but this one was the big game I think the biggest problem in my life um, since to me giving birth is like really discovering what love on earth is about it was just it was almost like she the ba my baby <laughs> filled the hole in my heart or um, that nothing uh, or a hole in, uh, or she filled the yearning that I had that nothing 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 could ever feel all right 
and also she opened me up to more realized love towards the people I already love and I still love them with the, uh, the same grandness it's just something of the in the quality of love changed anyways maybe maybe my sensitivity so that was the biggest one I uh, speaking so much I jumped into the depth of the subject but when I um, basically gave birth the place I was in emotionally was so profound and I explained it but it's hard for people to understand because when you get overtaken with that amount of love and joy you cry and a lot of people misunderstand it as a sad emotion it's beyond it's beyond joyous but you just it's so grand it's when you realize the profoundness and the intensity of the universe the, the feeling is so grand that I think a lot of us cry or at least I I would just cry and I loved the emotion which lasted up until I think two months postpartum and then I started working and that kind of backed off I can still get into that same emotion if I take a day off and I just lay and I let myself feel stuff so it's still in me but day to day I'm back to just kind of empty mindedness and um, Kind of keeping myself in the joyous side of things uh, because you know every morning when you wake up you have a choice how do you feel and it's you have to connect with your mindfulness and just feel joy and to some people that comes naturally for some people it's really difficult and some people have to work on it and it's kind of mid so um uh, so moving forward uh, the first uh, two months was I just let myself rest the first uh, let's go first two weeks very hard physically absolutely amazing spiritually um, just uh, the amount of basically what it felt like it's like surgery with an organ removal which is like literally what it was because you grew an organ that was well integrated into your body and then the removal of the organ was kind of aggressive birth was Again, probably one of the most beautiful things I've gone through, but most intense, that's why. Otherwise it wouldn't have been that beautiful for me um, because intensity is kind of my element. Uh, steadiness, groundedness and intensity and fire. Uh, so um, the healing was intense amount of bruising and just almost you're recovering from a surgery. There was just bruising and um, nothing out of the ordinary to report is just pelvic um, rawness, pelvic floor rawness, um, birth canal rawness, just everything was bruised and um, uh, my kidneys uh, or my bladder was paralyzed for a few weeks, probably two weeks to where I wasn't getting the, the, the call that it's full, it was just hold, so I had to just I figured out I have to just go pee every hour or so and hydrate really a lot and just I wasn't gonna get the call that my bladder is full it would just keep holding so I would just go and make myself pee basically every hour uh, and that way it recovered but it took a while it took a few weeks to recover um, I stayed I kept it very uh, basic and easy I didn't clean didn't do anything uh, didn't walk I think for at least a week or two and just I took it easy so that my body can heal the only thing I somewhat overdid but it worked out okay was uh, I started going back to shopping at first I had uh, uh, my partner always come with me uh, because my mother-in-law was um, visited us so she could watch my baby so he can carry the heavy bags that's the only thing because I couldn't lift anything heavy it wasn't uh, you have to protect yourself from prolapse so you shouldn't lift anything heavy so I started shopping a little too early and carrying bags but that was the only thing I kind of was impatient with um, with baby um, what else should I say as far as uh, breastfeeding breastfeeding was very 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 painful in the first two weeks um i think 10 days and i was almost thinking something is not right she's not latching right maybe she, maybe she's not opening her mouth wide enough or something all of the stuff that you would read online and i think on day five after her birth 
uh, my pediatrician said it seems like you're doing fine because she was actually she never lost weight uh, and most babies do so it seems like she's eating fine everything is fine just give it a little time and if it doesn't work then uh, contact the uh, lactation consultant and it actually around day 10 maybe or no it was probably around this, a week two uh, things started to just work out it wasn't as painful basically i think um transitioning from colostrum to milk was extremely painful that was day three four after that was kind of painful just very painful but but doable pain and after that i started having good sessions and then not so good sessions good sessions and finally towards then day week two it started feeling good up until when it got to week three it, it felt great the only tip i can give you if you're trying to stick with breastfeeding which a lot of people want to quit at that stage is relax that is the only thing that i think causes the problems and then from them it record it creates a ricochet effect or it just spirals out of control um so if you're not relaxed if if you tense your shoulders which uh, when you're breastfeeding that translates into your uh, milk supply or how the milk comes out so the baby may start sucking harder and it creates stress in the mouth of the baby stressing how your mi milk flows that's my my personal understanding i haven't read that anywhere but i have heard a lot of people say that as soon as they realize to just relax their body everything starts to happen so i noticed that every time she latched on i'll go like this and i wouldn't be able to talk because it was that painful and every time even though it was painful i would just go you know yoga techniques you just relax and you breathe just a very relaxing breath and that was absolutely a game changer i think that's all you need because that's why they say it is natural for women to breastfeed because it is but we get so heady about all the details and then it, we make it so technical and so complicated uh, in society as everything else really OCD stuff and then we tense so much and then for the tension we have to get a nipple rule, guard, shield and then that creates more problems with the milk supply and the baby reacts to it and it's just it's it's a it's a cycle so try to relax no matter what and I started breastfeeding I'm still exclusively breastfeeding I haven't pumped a single ounce of milk because I tried during the painful stage to pump and it just freaked me out uh, maybe the pump wasn't the right pump for me but it just was like I, I still joke about it it was a booby vacuum it just sucked, sucked in like real in a gross way uh, my uh, all of my breast tissue into the, the cup maybe that is the case with smaller breasts uh, which even though now I'm I, obviously i'm a few uh, size bigger it's still i'm on the small side for a breastfeeding woman so maybe it's it's just for the smaller breasted people that it just the whole thing goes into the but uh, i was after like a few pumps i was like no this is not gonna work for me baby has to be on the booby and um since then it just uh, we've just been on the booby <laughs> and that's that uh we are exclusively doing baby led uh, breastfeeding meaning i in sleep schedule um the reason why i'm doing this is because i myself i'm not a very organized person so schedules don't work for me so it won't work for her because i can see already her personality and it's just gonna stress me out i can't do schedules it's not gonna stress me out it's just gonna be impossible uh, so she's just telling me when she's hungry she, I'm always around to feed her if she's hungry if I go shopping I run in and out of the house very quickly uh, and after I feed her and um, she feeds through the night she I think overall she's an easy baby and a good sleeper we have had problems with sleeping just right now we finished a sleep progression that I think lasted about five days and I was just dead after it because she was waking up every hour through the sleep regression which is the fourth month sleep regression but it ended today so i figure if it's not broken don't fix it uh she feeds once a night outside of the sleep regression during the sleep regression it was just i didn't get much sleep but normally typically since she was an infant or a newborn 
Uh, well, the first few weeks she fed a lot. Every three hours, I think. Every three to four hours uh, as a baby, as an infant. Now, I don't know what she does during the day. She just feeds three or four times during the day. She tells me when she wants to feed. And during the night, we do one feed and one on upon awakening. One at bedtime, one during the night and one upon awakening. For me, awakening, she continues sleeping. She does sleep over 12 hours, I think. Well, we go to bed oftentimes at one, uh, and she wakes up at one or two. Uh, so that's her schedule. I would get her to, we were going to bed at 12 and 11 for a while, so I think we'll get back to that slowly again. This was just a sleep regression. We went back to 1 a.m. bedtime which is okay with me because my bedtime is 12 ideally i would like her to go to bed at 11 so she wakes up at 11 and i wake up at 10 and i have a little bit of me time so i'm not doing anything to aggressively change it because whenever i try to wake her up in the morning that leads to fussiness all day and bad night of sleep that night which i've tried on twice and i figured just forget about it i'm happy with the schedule we're on it works for me i get to work i get my work done i get sleep don't fix it um don't try to break it basically um and um so that's about the sleep that's about the breastfeeding uh, i think i covered everything about breastfeeding i have enough milk um I'm now pretty able to control my mil milk supply through my diet. If I, uh, because I'm vegan, if, uh, for those new to the channel, otherwise, uh, I've had vegan breastfeeding uh, videos, vegan uh, pregnancy videos, so you kind of know, you, some of you know that I'm vegan. Uh, but, and I don't like the word vegan anymore. I never did like it, but it's just very close to what I am. I just don't eat any animal products. Uh, but vegan, you know, it's become such a raw word in the in, on, online that I don't know what word to use anymore so that it doesn't sound negative or off-putting or aggressive or um, I don't know. Anyways, so... Um, I think I'm gonna. Uh, so yeah, I can uh, I can uh, correct my mil milk supply if I eat more fruit. It comes in too much to where it's just uncomfortable. It leaks. It's it's just uh, it's if if you're constantly leaking, it becomes kind of gross. Like it's like constantly sweating or something. It's just you're never dry and it uh, it doesn't feel very good. But I regulated it at about a month and a half or two postpartum. I just only produce milk for her. And that's that. I don't leak uh, outside of that. I'm just feeding her and everything else is fine. Um, if I eat a lot, a lot of fruit for dinner uh, instead of vegetables, then the next day I would overproduce and get a little extra milk. So I don't, I just basically eat fruit for lunch, vegetables for dinner, and that produces just enough. Uh, and I, follow my nutrients and stuff to make sure that I'm eating enough of every nutrient zinc and magnesium and calcium and all of that um, so uh, that is pretty cool I can uh, correct I can actually uh, totally control my milk supply and I try not to overproduce because it doesn't feel comfortable and I know how to eat now I figured it out to the T how to control it how to produce just enough and how to eat enough for me and her uh, so it's it's all enough uh, and uh, oh okay so everybody is interested probably in weight loss I am um, I'm not quite sure I didn't weigh myself before I was pregnant but I received the scale when I was pregnant and didn't know it at around like five weeks or four weeks of my pregnancy so I had gained a rapid amount of weight, probably five pounds or six pounds just from getting pregnant. Probably water retention and just hormonal shifting. I noticed it. My midsection, the first symptom of pregnancy was I got a little straight through my, I just lost my waistline. So I could see something was happening here and my hormones were acting up. But because I wasn't wishing to be pregnant, I ignored 
the realization that I was pregnant. <laughs> the subconscious realization. So I didn't weigh myself pre-pregnancy, but I want to say I was around 120 something, 120, let's say 123. And I gained, when my scale arrived, I was 127, 128, but that was the five pounds I had gained from pregnancy. So I think pre-pregnancy I was 123 or something like that probably. I got up to 140, 139, 140 at the day of birth. The first week after birth or the first three days after birth, I should say, I was 140. I lost the baby, the water, amniotic fluid, placenta and everything, but my feet was just literally this big. I was so water retained that I was the same weight as pregnant. And I had 10 pounds of water retention and uh, that started to wear off i was actually after birth i think from the not eating for two days during labor and everything else i think i was skinnier than ever just everywhere else like my arms and legs and no muscle i don't know what happened it was hormonal but i just uh, was actually had lost a lot of actual fat I gained water, I was holding water, but I lost fat. So I think I, I, I don't know that I, weigh, I gained any weight other than the baby, the placenta and the water in the blood uh, volume. Uh, but I do think that I was probably holding about four or five pounds of fat here, maybe, um, because that is just a hormonal thing your body does in order to protect the baby and just, it's just a hormonal thing. So up until I was two months postpartum, I did have kind of like a big belly and it took 10 times literally 10 times the effort to just start toning this area back to where it was then it would normally take me if i'm a little bit overweight normally because i have a happy place in my body where i like to be there um for my yoga and for my just general sense of well-being and how energetic I am I want I have a happy place where I don't like my stomach to be bloated or um, I don't like to be too overweight because it it makes my hips kind of uncomfortable it's just you know your body best you know what I'm talking about everybody knows their body when you tune in into where your happy uh, place is normally for me is I fluctuate on both sides of my happy place but I walk that balance pretty much daily um, so I, I think now I am at absolutely the same weight and everything uh, as, post, uh, as pre pregnancy, except for my belly is still not as strong. I can do a second chaturanga for those new to my channel, that's a push up. Uh, so I can do chaturanga, but I can't quite do the second. I can, but I'm still not having this core strength my core is still not the core i used to have and i will give it nine months to 12 months uh, of recovery time uh, with just patient recovery um otherwise let me show you the belly i should probably be standing but it is uh, it is back to flat let me tell you it wasn't uh, ignore the mess that's uh, lotus uh, blanket behind me that i will spread out when she wakes up so she uh, lays on it um um it wasn't flat up until two to two and a half months postpartum maybe three i don't remember maybe three um and i knew that i don't have bloating or anything so i knew it was it's just this how stretched out the tissue is and that is still the case if i eat i go back i i bloat i, I just stretch out very easily because the muscles and the connective tissue is really stretched and it will take a while to shrink back in so uh it's uh, basically it's that you're just supporting your connective tissue and coming back together because everything is just stretched out um actually i have unfortunately button button jeans so that's that's the belly I think it was about similar before my belly button got um, really destroyed and I don't know if it will ever go back but honestly I don't care it's really
it's it's very weird because even when I didn't know things are gonna go back, I never cared. I just I liberate. I I had such a profound sense of liberation of if I have to let go of my career, which is a yoga teacher. If I have to let go of my path, if I everything seemed little in comparison to the grandness of the connection with the divine you will probably be like what the bleep is she talking about it's if you get it you get it if you don't get it i don't know it, it, it's something that it's described in every tradition uh, religious spiritual etc tradition it's it's that it's that understanding of God or divine or just love or the universal oneness or something. Anyways, that is what birth and pregnancy and especially motherhood kind of gave me. What have I not covered? I think I should keep the baby stuff for a separate video, uh, meaning how she is doing and so forth. I think she she is a tall baby. I actually haven't. A measure her so I'll measure, measure her for the video I'll just quickly brief you on her but I'll do a separate video for her uh, because I want her to be in the video and I'll, I'll, I'll share a little more in-depth uh, details I think she's a tall baby I don't have any babies her age around me so I have no idea but she was born tall uh, 20 inches a little over 20 inches 20 point a little bit I think and uh, she was born 7'11", 7 pounds 11 ounces. So she was somewhat of a heavy baby, but you know, mid-row. There's heavier babies and there's lighter babies. So she was, I think, average. Um, she was tall and she still is pretty tall. Like she's very funny in dresses and stuff because she's tall. Um, she's good natured, uh, mellow, but she has fire in her and uh, her development has been so exciting for us, uh, both my partner and I, because she's our first baby. He he doesn't have other babies. I don't have other babies except for my brother, which who I was 13 when he was born. So I do have the experience of uh, being around someone coming into this world um, and playing with a toddler and with a newborn and so forth. That was kind of uh, his second mom. So I do have a, I'm sweating, I do have, it's really hot. I do have the experience of that actually, which is funny, uh, but um, I will keep her update. What else should I say about her? She, she eats well, uh, sleeps well, um, she doesn't spit or puke up food, which is good. Um, I don't think she had stomach pain as a, a newborn but I think maybe a few times she did uh, her developmental milestones I didn't write them down so it will be hard but now she rolls and she still doesn't see it. she tries to talk I think I think of all the qualities um, you know how every baby develops at their own, uh, own um, um, speed I think her biggest thing is talk I think that's her like big desire to learn to talk because she really really tries and now she's producing different sounds another funny thing is her father started playing music to her he would play the guitar and sing and she literally tears up within absolute adoration <laughs> for him she would listen to him for an hour no matter if, if it's last night we did this till one o'clock in the morning uh, she woke up she i put her down and whatever and she woke up uh, at 11 or 12 and we just did a concert he did a concert for her and she would just stretch her toes with intensity and just kick and listen to him it was pretty cute um it's always oh, beautiful to watch someone come into this world is beautiful because they're so pure they're coming from the non-verbal and spiritual realms coming into this and it's it's just I think I can if I slow down and I don't have work this day I can just kind of tear up with the intensity of the the profoundness of what life is uh, another thing about I will keep her stuff in a separate video but that is another thing about me the profoundness of life the intensity of life I can you just it has opened such a 
such a grand way of feeling emotions in me and okay the other thing big thing i'm gonna talk before i stop and please post in the comments below questions that you want me to address about postpartum because it's such a big subject and i just don't i don't want to just talk about you know my weight loss or my physical recovery those things were pretty uneventful they just took time that's all time and yoga and i've already shared that 30 day postpartum recovery classes so you have tools from me to recover beautifully and fully and to have no pelvic floor issues which some people told me they do um yeah that for me has healed through the classes i did i'm closing in all the looseness here so do that um if you're postpartum do my series even if you're a year postpartum or more um and even if you're c-section uh letting go yeah when i first I'll, I'll try to say this and i'll finish the video so it's not too long when i first got pregnant there was massive changes in youtube and youtube is part of my job i have my membership on my website which is obviously my main focus but youtube is still a part of my job i offer free classes there uh, and i just want to reach new people through youtube uh it's a platform and they did some algorithm algorithm changes where i would not end up in any searches if you go search yoga i just won't end up anywhere so basically and every time i would upload new video they would delete my subscribers so i would lose subscribers every time i posted a video so i didn't post a lot during pregnancy because i was like oh this is terrible not only most of my subscribers are not pregnant so i don't have a lot of content that i can share that's relevant to them but also youtube is doing this and it was just such a hit and i i, I did go through emotion about it because it felt it felt it felt like i'm gonna lose my work and career and i don't know what the next step is for me and it was so profound because i actually let it go i realized that i don't care if i do i don't care if there's changes in my body i don't care if i have to do a different career and i was never attached in the first place to this one i just love it but i don't have attachment and the pregnancy made me realize that i don't have that attachment i'm open to learn new things i always saw myself as a when i saw myself old when i was in my 20s i saw myself with long white hair with hempy like hemp flowy clothes drapey clothes and just being an herbalist uh, growing herbs and making something new with them that was never discovered before because i have to be an inventor so i just realized yeah i don't i, I there is a gra grander path out there for me than then i was walking and letting go of this one i'm not abandoning it i'm still working harder than ever on this one but the attachment was dissolved through kind of pain <laughs> how this work how uh, in general life works pain is always our it propels us towards our greatness uh so um that was it i let go of a lot of things i let go of who i used to be i let go of my independence that's another subject i wanted to touch upon uh the whole independence i used to really love my independence i wanted to know that i can travel and just be me and go be an immigrant abroad all this the hard stuff i chose for myself uh and just just not have the the confinement of traditional society is the way when you grow up in a small country like bulgaria it's just the horizon at the time didn't feel high enough it just i felt like i wanted to be free and i chose kind of a really hard path for myself because being an immigrant is the hardest thing you can do away from everybody that loves you just being so alone really away from the amazing family that i have uh, and uh and i lost obviously i lost that independence but i don't feel it i don't feel that i lost anything all i feel is that i have gained so much and i cannot believe i waited this long for this i didn't think i would have children ever and uh, well i'm glad i listened to my intuition when the time was right obviously i did at the right time even in my chart i chose delayed children which i thought it would be no children but um 
basically I don't feel like I've lost my independence I feel that I've gained such an internal richness and that my life has changed so much for in in a way that I'll have wished for that I just I just don't sit and linger on the stuff and if I wanna obviously I can't pick up and go to Thailand now because I, it's just a little more complicated and I won't backpack by my just but those things seem more shallow to me now I feel like the true liberation and the true freedom and true life is always within always within our reach and it's always within our um, creative um, action meaning we can create it if we want to i'm really sweating bullets it's like 80 something degrees here uh by the way that has not been i've heard that some women sweat a lot uh, from postpartum it hasn't been one of my symptoms um i haven't been sweating i've been kind of enjoying the heat but uh anyways i think i will wrap it up with that i started to get emotional which i wanted to uh, because i wanted to touch up on actually the real feeling of of motherhood the real uh, the, the gain of freedom it's just for me letting go of so many things that i was holding on to of the person i used to be uh gave me freedom so the fact that i can't back up through thailand i really could if i wanted to but point is i would not want to um it doesn't feel like something was taken away from me it feels like i've gained anyways i think that is it for now if you have questions please let me know let me know if this was helpful for you give me a thumbs up which i never asked for subscribe share and all the other good stuff and i'll talk to you soon namaste